Okay, in today's video, we're looking at our Techno HDS 5x10 CNC router. This machine is now available. It comes with a 12 horsepower HSD electro spindle, eight position automatic tool changer in the back, a combination vacuum table and aluminum T-slot table with four manual zones. It's also equipped with a Becker VTLF vacuum pump. This is the newer style with the clear filter. This thing has been cleaned, checked, and lubricated. The entire machine's been gone through. We've replaced a handful of small, minor cosmetic parts, as well as one of the air control valves. We put new brushes on the dust hood, and we've greased and lubed the entire machine. In today's video, we're gonna run through some basics just so you can hear the machine moving around. We're gonna turn the spindle on. We're gonna do a couple of tool changes. And in a later video, we'll go ahead and put a spoil board on the machine, add some dust collection, and do some cutting examples for you. A couple other quick features we're gonna point out. One, you've got vacuum gauges on the front of the machine. You've also got a vacuum gauge on the actual pump itself. This can be very helpful in determining whether or not you have vacuum. And if you're losing any vacuum, if it's a table leak, a gasket leak, or some sort of performance issue, those are great to have. You've got your automatic tool touch off that'll allow you to calibrate your tools. And that way the machine always knows how long those tools are and what depths need to be programmed. You can see the vacuum table itself is in really great shape. We actually did the original training and setup for this machine when it was new in 2015. Then when the pandemic hit, this company closed their doors, never reopened this location, and now this machine is available. So it has very low hours. Initially, it was never used in high production, maybe just a couple hours a day. And then it's been in storage ever since the pandemic started, but available now. We've wiped off the dust, greased and lubed all the contact points. This machine is ready to run. You can see it also includes the original uh, Techno user's manual. It's in perfect shape. And you can go through that and see all the different bits of information they've got in there about setup and operation. Comes with the original toolbox, which all these machines typically come with. It's got some collets in here. And uh, I do have all of the tool holder uh, plastic cases. So those will travel in there. Some more original documentation about the electrical components. In fact, let's take a quick look inside the cabinet here. You did get the full Dell computer and the Dell monitor, the Dell keyboard, the Dell mouse. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And here you can see we've got a Delta VFD for the spindle, all Delta drives and motors for all the servo motors. There's your open OSI Italian controller. There's some schematics on the wall along with your serial number and information. And then down below, that's your full-blown desktop Windows professional PC. I'll even include the USB Wi-Fi adapter on the back. So we're able to connect and have Wi-Fi from our shop and be able to Dropbox our files onto this machine in order to run from our Enroute CAD CAM software. So one of the first things we check for on a CNC router is we check its motion. We wanna hear an X, Y, and Z. If there's any strange noises, grinding, clicking, anything like that, that usually points to a problem. If the machine is super whisper quiet, that's gonna to point to very little use. There's not a lot of wear or backlash on those gears and pinions. And that helps us determine some of that condition before we get to physically looking at the machine. So here we're gonna go ahead and right now we're gonna jog. This is a 300 inches a minute. And you probably can't even hear that machine moving in the video. We do the same in the X axis. The X axis is even quieter. Now we'll come down in the Z-axis. Once my air compressor kicks on, you absolutely can't hear anything, so we'll wait till that turns off. Okay, so we've mentioned uh, the controller, the Delta inverters, drives, amplifiers, servo motors. Um, we also talked about the Dell PC, 
This thing also has THK guideways and rails. So again, quality components throughout. And also standard on this machine is the helical rack and pinion. So that's gonna give you more contact area, better load, uh, performance, and longevity. We're gonna go ahead and bump this up to 620 inches a minute. We still can't hear it in the short axis. In the long axis, you hear a little bit. And there's the Z axis. Everything is super, super smooth. There's 775 inches a minute. I'll have a link to all the specs below and the max travel speeds in the description. So that's a little bit of the machine moving around. Now we're going to go ahead and do a tool change. Come over here, and here is the simple to use techno interface. You can see the jogging buttons are very simple. This is pointed in the direction you're going to go. So forward is forward, left is left, towards me, towards me, and then your z-axis up and down right here. Also really easy to grab your file once you're ready to run a file. You just click here and choose the, the program that you want. And if we want to go to the hand wheel, we can choose this. Right now we're in continuous mode. You have your jog speed, or you can go up and down, adjust that jog speed. And also adjust your spindle speed on the fly, as well as your overall uh, cutting speed or travel speed. Um, we have full access to the shroud. So I can make the shroud go up and down. As you can see, we've got this one dialed in very nicely. It's super smooth. That new air control valve. Uh, we also have pop-up pins if I move the machine towards the back and we can see those pop-up pins. On this model you have three pins as standard and again we have full control of those pins right here. And those are full metal pins so that's going to make it really easy to reference your material. You're going to have your spoil board up here and then you can just slide that piece of material up against those three pins and now you've got your parts or your material and the correct reference point to begin a program. Again, the machine comes with one full 10 horsepower Becker BTLF vacuum pump. You can control the vacuum pump right here on screen. And it's also preset to allow you to plug in a second pump and control a second pump from the screen as well. Right now we just have the one pump if we click on that button, it turns on the vacuum pump. And again, as you can hear, it's very smooth, very quiet. Probably get a little loud as we get closer to the pump. But we can also see that that thing is indeed pulling full vacuum, about 24 inches of mercury, just like they're designed to do from the factory. And that pump looks like new. Very low hours, very little use, just like the rest of the machine. Here's a look at the rack tool changer. You also have your air on the back with your filters and your regulator. And here is a look at the tool stand. This is where you can tighten all your tools up. It comes with a wrench, and then the tool holder just drops right inside the tight machine. We continue to look at the techno interface we can go into tools gives us a nice tool menu this can be a quick button for changing tools quick buttons for identifying tools quick buttons for setting your offsets and this is a nice thing that techno does to set these machines up like this otherwise uh, a lot of machines you have to go to the main screen click on mdi and type in a manual data input to tell the machine via g code what to do and how to do it so this simplifies the process and makes operating these machines a lot easier. We go to main, click on continuous, that button disappears, and we can go back to 
uh, the tool screen. Here we can do a lot of different things. We can still jog the machine. Um, we can still control our dust shroud and our pins, but we can also change tools. So right now, if you notice up in here, we see that tool four is the current machine or the current tool in the machine. So we can verify that in fact, we do have number four position open. And so if we choose another tool, the machine will automatically put back the current tool in the correct spot and go grab the tool that's been requested. So let's go ahead and request tool number one. Perfect, very smooth, very clean tool change pickup. We're gonna go back and jog this machine away from the tool changer a little bit. We're gonna go back to the main screen. We're gonna increase our cut speed to 100%. And we're gonna go back to the tool menu and we're gonna do another tool change. Let's change tools to number three this time. You can see we're moving a little bit quicker. Now that we've got the machine at 100%. And it's ready to go. So again, really quick, really clean tool changes. Once you have an automatic tool changer, you never go back. We're gonna move this machine away from the tool changer again. So we can show you the automatic tool touch off once we have some tools chucked up into those spindle. But right now, all of our tool holders are empty. You do have an input output screen, which is actually labeled. So if you have any input outputs you're troubleshooting, you can actually see that right here on the screen. Another nice thing about the OSI controller. And now we'll go ahead and chuck a tool up in the spindle and we'll do a spindle test so you can hear the spindle turn on and we'll warm that up and that is one of the other things we always want to check when we're purchasing a CNC router especially a pre-owned router we want to make sure that spindle sounds good we don't want to hear any growling whining grinding anything like that uh, obviously this is one of the most expensive parts on the machine probably somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars when new and probably anywhere between four to six thousand dollars to do a full bearing replacement. So we really don't want to buy a machine that's just on its last leg that might need a new spindle. So always make sure you can listen to the spindle, hear the spindle, test the spindle, and that it sounds smooth and that it doesn't have a lot of vibration when you when you inspect it. So we'll go ahead and get a tool up in there now, and we'll come back and warm that spindle up. Okay, we've got our tool holder, we've got the tool in here, we've got a pin tight. We're gonna just drop this right here on the stand. We're gonna take out our wrench, and then we're just gonna tighten it up. Now, yeah, you can get torque wrenches, or you can set them to a certain uh, foot pound. I think it's 90 foot pounds. But this one, you're just gonna get it nice and snug. We're not gonna jump on it or, or hit it with a hammer, and that is good. So now we're gonna take that, put it back in the spindle. Some of you might be wondering, what in the world is this tool? Maybe you've never seen that kind of tool before. It is a, a specialty tool. And if we look in the book here, it is an on-tree cutter, 57 dash, or 67 dash 511. And it's a quarter inch cutting diameter. But the important part here is it's made for carbon graphite and carbon fiber panels. So very specific, the way the geometry is. And the flutes, that's designed to cut carbon fiber panels. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stick this back in the spindle and do a spindle test. If you're changing a tool that's already in the spindle, you can use this method, it's really easy. There's a button right here. Simply hit the button, let go, and now that tool is in there and it's ready to go. Typically, you just wanna change the tools that are out in the rack, then you don't have to worry about opening up the spindle manually. Okay. We have tool three in the spindle. We can check here on our screen. Yes, tool three is correctly in the spindle. And 
if we go to the tool menu and we say offset tool three, then that will take tool three back to the automatic touch off and perform the automatic touch off automatically. Let's do it. So it's moving at high speed and then it starts to come down slowly onto the touch off device. And it does it a second time at an even slower speed, and it's done. That tool length is now saved permanently in the controller. If we want to take a look at the screen here, it'll even tell us the tool three offset has been updated with a new number. Go back to the main screen, hit continuous, or reset, and that little message goes away. That's how easy it is to put a new tool in this machine and measure it, it's calibrated and ready to run. Okay, we're gonna do a spindle test. To do this, I'm gonna use the MDI mode. M3 is the command to turn the spindle on and then S is for spindle and 8000 tells it what RPM to run at. We're gonna confirm that. And then as soon as we hit the site, uh, cycle start, the machine will turn on. Kind of hear that now. Now our spindle is running at 8,000 RPM. The ramp up was nice and clean. Very quiet, very smooth. No significant vibrations at all. So those are all good signs. I also want to listen to it when it ramps down. So I'll go ahead and put in the spindle off command, which is M5. M5, confirm and cycle start. Perfect. Stops with no issue, no error messages. Everything's connected properly. The on and off works perfectly smooth. Ramps down quickly with the brake. Go ahead and do one more spindle test. We'll set it up for 12,000 RPM. Again, we're just gonna hit M3, S12,000. Firm and cycle start. It's even quieter as we get higher up in the RPM range. And again, for anybody wondering, this is an HSD spindle. It's the ES929 base model, and it does have the 24,000 RPM max. So again, in a later video, we'll go ahead and put the dust collection on, put a spoil board on here, and do some test cuts. But at this point, this machine is ready to go and is now available. Of course, we've got it powered up. Be happy to show you a one-on-one -on -one demo. Thanks for watching.